Welcome back to Two Dudes Audio, and today we're reviewing the Harbinger VS18. These are 18 inch powered speakers, and I'm just waiting for Sean to get here, and here he is. Sean, what's up, man? What's up, Chaz? How's it going, man? Hey, are you ready to review these I speakers? I am so ready. We just gotta grab these subs and, and get going. Where are they at? Well, they're in the van. Chaz, uh, you have that look on your face. When you say in the van, you don't mean in the van, do you? Chaz? Chaz, come back here. Chaz, where are you going? Chaz, Chaz. <laughs> so the price on this 18 inch subwoofer right now, Guitar Center just dropped the price to $699.99. I don't know if that's gonna be a forever price, so you might wanna move on that pretty quick. There's gonna be a link in the description. Anytime you buy through one of our links, it obviously supports our channel and we really appreciate that. The sub actually features two really good quality metal handles on either side. They definitely feel solid and they're good handles, what can we say? Just wanted to go over some of the features of the Harbinger VS18. We've got two inputs, uh, input one and two XLR and quarter inch, and then you've got outputs one and two, those are both XLR. You've got a polarity reversal switch, you've got a minus 10 dB cut, plus four uh, boost if you want. You've got a master volume knob and you've got a time aligning delay knob so that if you wanna set the delay for the cabinets, and then you've got your crossover frequency selector so that you can select what frequencies you wanna cut off, nothing above a certain frequency to be allowed. And then also kind of random, it just has this five volt USB port, which I mean, did you wanna charge your cell phone? Did you want to power some uh, LED lights? I don't know, like it's there. So the front of the cabinet actually does feature an LED light, which will actually indicate power on and as you saw for a second there, it was red. That is actually a clipping light. So the bottom of the subwoofer cabinet actually has these rubber pads, which just protects it when you're setting the subwoofer down so you're not scratching the surface. Casters actually have a neat design to them. They have this gear and tooth uh, set up so that when you lock the wheel, not only does the wheel no longer roll, but it also doesn't swivel anymore either. It just locks it in place, which is a really nice feature. So another thing we noticed is that the pole mount uh, for this subwoofer is actually made of plastic, which probably would not have been our choice, but it does look like a pretty heavy duty plastic. So right now we're about six feet away from the subwoofer and we're gonna try a frequency sweep with the subwoofer set at full range. That first frequency sweep was at half volume. Now we're gonna try it at, are we gonna try it at full volume, Chaz? Is, yeah. that, a, is that a good idea in here? We're doing it. We're doing it, okay, I'm gonna crank it up. Here it goes. Man, that like 115 hertz is just really yeah. loud. <laughs> yeah, that's what it punches you right in the eardrum and you're like, oh God. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this cover off and we're gonna do some free air tests of this subwoofer.
Okay, we're just gonna try a frequency sweep to see what kind of output we get volume wise. So we just did a frequency sweep and we're standing about one meter in front of the speaker and it was peaking at about 107 decibels. Uh, it was clipping the whole time so it's basically turning itself down to, to save itself from any damage. Uh, so under the right conditions, maybe lower volume, that 134 decibels, it might be achievable but at the way we tested it, it was not achievable. And now we're just gonna uninstall this 18 inch subwoofer so that we can free air it. The cabinet for the subwoofer does actually seem really well made and it's nice quality and there's good insulation inside here as well. Audio companies go crazy with their peak ratings and their RMS ratings, and who knows if they're even accurate. Well, we got the SMD audio multimeter to check how many watts this amplifier puts out. We're gonna use this in future videos also. So let's see how many watts RMS this amplifier actually reproduces. Now we're going to try dyno power. This is going to be a frequency sweep of the real world power maxed out. So we're looking at the sub from above here and you can actually see the voice coil between the vents there. What's the temperature at? It's only showing it's 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's see, you can look inside there. No. But that's cool, you can actually see the voice coil. Then now we're gonna look below. So it's definitely getting warm. Looks like uh, the trace there behind it is getting really warm. Maybe that would be something that would fail and burn out at some point. You can see the MOSFETs here are getting pretty warm. So the heat sink is working a bit here, but that's coming from these coils. Uh, you want to flip it around, Sean, and we can look at the other side? Wow, all right, the whole, the whole thing is getting pretty warm. It only feels slightly warm. Yeah, it says it's 95. But, I mean, that's definitely working as a heat sink. So we're standing about 10 feet away right now, and we're gonna try a base frequency sweep. All right, so 10 feet away at half volume on the subwoofer. For the frequency sweep, we're going to have the subwoofer set to 70 hertz. Okay, 10 feet away at max volume, frequency sweep. Clipping. Got a red light. Ninety two decibels. Really? So only two more decibels at max volume versus 
half volume, which peaked at, I think, 90 decibels. I was expecting a lot more decibels for max volume, so I don't know. It but, was peaking that whole time also. It was, that's right. So <laughs> it was actually saving itself from, from damage, and it was turning itself down. It's pretty impressive though. Yeah. From here, it's pretty impressive. Now we're gonna try 20 feet away from the subwoofer at half volume on the subwoofer and another frequency sweep. So not quite 90 decibels that time, but still pretty much putting out the same amount of sound. Okay, now we're trying another frequency sweep at max volume on the subwoofer at 20 feet away. It turned down a lot right there. Okay. 93 decibels that time, I guess. I mean, it was clipping the entire time, but um, still, still put out a, a nice amount of sound. Okay, we are 47.5 feet away from the subwoofer right now, and we are going to try another frequency sweep, and this is at half volume on the subwoofer. Wasn't expecting it to be clipping at half volume, but it was for just certain frequencies there. All right, now one last frequency sweep at 20 feet away at max volume. Okay, not bad. I mean, we're pretty far back and we still hear it nice and loud and clear. So here we are, now is the time when we discuss what we thought of this subwoofer. What do we like about it? We gotta give it a dude score as well. Chaz, what did you like about this subwoofer? So I loved the sub. Overall, I really did, you know, the amplifier here, it has a limiter built in so it doesn't destroy the low end driver. I also really like that the low end driver seems to handle more than what this amplifier can actually put out. It wasn't nice. getting super hot, no matter how much we tested it and beat, beat this thing, I didn't smell any voice coil getting hot, which is right. awesome. And that's, you definitely don't wanna be running the thing and smelling the voice coil. We didn't smell anything burning which no. was awesome with all the testing that we did. And sometimes with equipment, right out of the box, you notice a, a factory smell or a chemically smell from, from the products. We actually didn't notice that with these at all. Nope. So I love the, the sound is, is clear and crisp. It definitely, it definitely packs a punch, which is exactly what you want from a subwoofer. But the, the overall quality of the cabinet is what really impressed me. The casters are amazing. The, the cabinet is solid and heavy, but that's also kind of a downside too because this weighs 86 pounds, which is a little on the heavy side, but it just really speaks to the quality of it. It's, it's well made. So something I don't like is the Pull Mountains plastic. I also don't like that the lower frequencies are just not as loud and not there. Um, it's more of like a mid-bass, you know, punching in your chest type of bass 
which it's okay. It does reproduce the low frequencies okay. They're just not super loud if you're looking for that low EDM bass. You're gonna have to definitely get a couple of these cabinets, you know, together. together yeah. Overall, I think we're both decided and we're gonna give it an eight out of 10 dudes. That's right, eight dudes would recommend picking up one of these subwoofers. And realistically, what are you worried about? You're worried about how is that sub going to survive when I beat the crap out of it? You know, is the amp gonna go? Is the sub gonna go? Well, because of the limiting, it's you don't really have to worry about it. And it didn't overheat and it didn't shut off all the testing that we were doing with it. So we're pretty satisfied and we definitely recommend it for def at least the beginners. You know? Now, right now, these subwoofers are retailing for $799 from a Guitar Center, and there's actually going to be a link in the description if you're interested in picking one up for yourself. So thanks, guys, for sticking through the video. And make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that when we drop new content, you're the first to find out.